corresponding to an independent branch of which it is the only member. It is the official language of Armenia. Historically spoken in the Armenian highlands, today Armenian is widely spoken throughout the Armenian diaspora. Armenian is written in its own writing system, the Armenian alphabet, introduced in 405 AD by the priest Mesrop Mashtits. The total number of Armenian speakers worldwide is estimated between 5 and 7 million. Play Media Arena, a speaker of the Artsakh dialect of Armenian Armenian is an independent branch of the Indo-European languages. It is of interest to linguists for its distinctive phonological developments within that family. Armenian exhibits more satimization than sentimization, although it is not classified as belonging to either of these subgroups. Some linguists tentatively conclude that Armenian, Greek and Indo-Iranian were dialectally close to each other, within this hypothetical dialect group. Proto-Armenian was situated between Proto-Greek and Proto-Indo-Iranian. Ronald I. Kim has noted unique morphological developments connecting Armenian to Balto-Slavic languages. Armenia was a monolingual country by the 2nd century BC at the latest. Its language has a long literary history, with a 5th century Bible translation as its oldest surviving text. Its vocabulary has historically been influenced by Western Middle Iranian languages, particularly Parthian, its derivational morphology and syntax were also affected by language contact with Parthian, but to a lesser extent. Contact with Greek, Persian, and Syriac also resulted in a number of loanwords. There are two standardized modern literary forms, Eastern Armenian and Western Armenian, with which most contemporary dialects are mutually intelligible. Although Armenians were known to history much earlier. The oldest surviving Armenian language text is the 5th century AD Bible translation of Mesrop Mashtits, who created the Armenian alphabet in 405, at which time it had 36 letters. He is also credited by some with the creation of the Georgian alphabet and the Caucasian Albanian alphabet. While Armenian constitutes the sole member of the Armenian branch of the Indo European family, Aram Koshin has suggested that the hypothetical Mushki language may have been an Armenic language. W. M. Austin concluded that there was early contact between Armenian and Anatolian languages, based on what he considered common archaisms, such as the lack of a feminine gender and the absence of inherited long vowels. However, unlike shared innovations, the common retention of archaisms is not considered conclusive evidence of a period of common isolated development. There are words used in Armenian that are generally believed to have been barred from Anatolian languages, particularly from Lewin, although some researchers have identified possible Hittite loanwords as well. One notable loanword from Anatolian is Armenian Zalim, Skull, cognate to Hittite Halanta, Head. In 1985, Soviet linguist Igor M. Dyakov noted the presence in classical Armenian of what he calls a Caucasian substratum identified by earlier scholars, consisting of loans from the Kartvelian and Northeast Caucasian languages. Noting that hero urartian speaking peoples inhabited the Armenian homeland in the 2nd millennium BC, Daikonov identifies in Armenian. A hero urartian substratum of social, cultural, and animal and plant terms such as alax and slave girl hen. Cuff cc, old camel, and zdrapple. Some of the terms he gives admittedly have an Akkadian or Sumerian provenance, but he suggests they were borrowed through Hurrian or urartian. Given that these borrowings do not undergo sound changes characteristic of the development of Armenian from Proto-Indo-European, he dates their borrowing to a time before the written record but after the Proto-Armenian language stage. Contemporary linguists, such as Harak Martyrosyan, have rejected many of the hero urartian and Northeast Caucasian origins for these words and instead suggest native Armenian etymologies. Leaving the possibility that these words may have been loaned into hero urartian and Caucasian languages from Armenian, and not vice versa. A notable example is Arkiv, meaning eagle, believed to have been the origin of Urartian RCB and Northeast Caucasian Arzu. This word is derived from Proto-Indo-European H2 Argipios, with cognates in Sanskrit, Avestan, and Greek. Harak Martyrosyan and Armin Petrosian propose additional borrowed words of Armenian origin loaned into Urartian and vice versa, including grammatical words and parts of speech. Such as Urartianu, attested in the earliest Urartian texts and likely alone from Armenian. Other loans from Armenian into Urartian includes personal names, toponyms, and names of deities. Loan words from Iranian languages, along with the other ancient accounts such as that of Xenophon above, initially led linguists to erroneously classify Armenian as an Iranian language. Scholars such as Paul de Lagarde and F. Mola believe that the similarities between the two languages meant that Armenian belonged to the Iranian language family. 
The distinctness of Armenian was recognized when philologist Heinrich Hubsmann used the comparative method to distinguish two layers of Iranian words from the older Armenian vocabulary. He showed that Armenian often had two morphemes for the one concept, and the non-Iranian components yielded a consistent pi pattern distinct from Iranian, and also demonstrated that the inflectional morphology was different from that in Iranian languages. Greco-Armenian hypothesis The hypothesis that Greek is Armenian's closest living relative originates with Holger Pedersen, who noted that the number of Greek-Armenian lexical cognates is greater than that of agreements between Armenian and any other Indo-European language. Antoine Maillet further investigated morphological and phonological agreement, postulating that the parent languages of Greek and Armenian were dialects in immediate geographical proximity in the Proto-Indo-European period. Melet's hypothesis became popular in the wake of his book Esquisse d'une histoire de la langue latine. Georg Renata Solta does not go as far as postulating a Proto-Greco-Armenian stage, but he concludes that considering both the lexicon and morphology, Greek is clearly the dialect most closely related to Armenian. Eric P. Hamp supports the Greco-Armenian thesis, anticipating even a time when we should speak of Helleno-Armenian. Armenian shares the augment, and a negator derived from the set phrase Proto-Indo-European language nih 2 o u quid, and the representation of word-initial laryngeals by prothetic vowels, and other phonological and morphological peculiarities with Greek. Nevertheless, as Fortson comments, by the time we reach our earliest Armenian records in the 5th century AD, the evidence of any such early kinship has been reduced to a few tantalizing pieces. greco armeno aryan hypothesis greco aryan is a hypothetical clade within the Indo-European family, ancestral to the Greek language, the Armenian language, and the Indo-Iranian languages. greco aryan unity would have become divided into Proto-Greek and Proto-Indo-Iranian by the mid-3rd millennium BC. Conceivably, Proto-Armenian would have been located between Proto-Greek and Proto-Indo-Iranian. Consistent with the fact that Armenian shares certain features only with Indo-Iranian but others only with Greek H. greco aryan has comparatively wide support among Indo-Europeanists who believe the Indo-European homeland to be located in the Armenian highlands, the Armenian hypothesis. Early and strong evidence was given by Euler's 1979 examination on shared features in Greek and Sanskrit nominal flexion. Used in tandem with the Greco-Armenian hypothesis, the Armenian language would also be included under the label Ariano greco armenic splitting into Proto-Greek-slash-Phrygian and Armeno-Aryan. Armenian Manuscript, 5th-6th century. Classical Armenian, attested from the 5th century to the 19th century as the literary standard. Was partially superseded by Middle Armenian, attested from the 12th century to the 18th century. Specialized literature prefers Old Armenian for Grabar as a whole, and designates as classical the language used in the 5th century literature. Post-classical from the late 5th to 8th centuries, and late Grabar that of the period covering the 8th to 11th centuries. Later, it was used mainly in religious and specialized literature, with the exception of a revival during the early modern period, when attempts were made to establish it as the language of a literary renaissance. With neoclassical inclinations, through the creation and dissemination of literature in varied genres, especially by the Makatarists. The first Armenian periodical, Ozdurar, was published in Grabar in 1794. The classical form borrowed numerous words from Middle Iranian languages, primarily Parthian, and contained smaller inventories of loanwords from Greek, Syriac, Aramaic, Arabic, Mongol, Persian, and indigenous languages such as Urartian. An effort to modernize the language in Bagratid Armenia and the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia resulted in the addition of two more characters to the alphabet, bringing the total number to 38. The Book of Lamentations by Gregory of Narek is an example of the development of a literature and writing style of Old Armenian by the 10th century. In addition to elevating the literary style and vocabulary of the Armenian language by adding well above a thousand new words, through his other hymns and poems Gregory paved the way for his successors to include secular themes and vernacular language in their writings. The thematic shift from mainly religious texts to writings with secular outlooks further enhanced and enriched the vocabulary. A Word of Wisdom, a poem by Hovana Sargavak devoted to a starling, legitimizes poetry devoted to nature, love, or female beauty. Gradually, the interests of the population at large were reflected in other literary works as well. Constantin Yerzinkatsi and several others even take the unusual step of criticizing the ecclesiastic establishment and addressing the social issues of the Armenian homeland. However, these changes represent the nature of the literary style and syntax, 
but they did not constitute immense changes to the fundamentals of the grammar or the morphology of the language. Often, when writers codify a spoken dialect, other language users are then encouraged to imitate that structure through the literary device known as parallelism. The Four Gospels, 1495, Portrait of St. Mark Welcome with Armenian Inscriptions First Printed Armenian Language Bible, 1666 In the 19th century, the traditional Armenian homeland was once again divided. This time Eastern Armenia was conquered from Qajar Iran by the Russian Empire, while Western Armenia, containing two-thirds of historical Armenia, remained under Ottoman control. The antagonistic relationship between the Russian and Ottoman empires led to creation of two separate and different environments under which Armenians lived. Halfway through the 19th century, two important concentrations of Armenian communities were further consolidated. Because of persecutions or the search for better economic opportunities, many Armenians living under Ottoman rule gradually moved to Istanbul, whereas Tbilisi became the center of Armenians living under Russian rule. These two cosmopolitan cities very soon became the primary poles of Armenian intellectual and cultural life. The introduction of new literary forms and styles, as well as many new ideas sweeping Europe, reached Armenians living in both regions. This created an ever-growing need to elevate the vernacular, Ashkarhabar, to the dignity of a modern literary language, in contrast to the now anachronistic Grabar. Numerous dialects existed in the traditional Armenian regions, which, different as they were, had certain morphological and phonetic features in common. On the basis of these features two major standards emerged, both centers vigorously pursued the promotion of Ashkarhabar. The proliferation of newspapers in both versions and the development of a network of schools where modern Armenian was taught dramatically increased the rate of literacy, even in remote rural areas. The emergence of literary works entirely written in the modern versions increasingly legitimized the language's existence. By the turn of the 20th century both varieties of the one modern Armenian language prevailed over Grabar and opened the path to a new and simplified grammatical structure of the language in the two different cultural spheres. Apart from several morphological, phonetic, and grammatical differences, the largely common vocabulary and generally analogous rules of grammatical fundamentals allows users of one variant to understand the other as long as they are fluent in one of the literary standards. After World War I, the existence of the two modern versions of the same language was sanctioned even more clearly. The Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic used Eastern Armenian as its official language, whereas the diaspora created after the Armenian Genocide preserved the Western Armenian dialect. Armenian language road sign. The two modern literary dialects, Western and Eastern, removed almost all of their Turkish lexical influences in the 20th century, primarily following the Armenian Genocide. The number of Armenian speakers by country according to official government sources, including censuses and estimates, Spoken Eastern Armenian Proto-Indo-European voiceless stop consonants are aspirated in the Proto-Armenian language. One of the circumstances that is often linked to the glottalic theory, a version of which postulated that the voiceless occlusives of Proto-Indo-European were aspirated. In Armenian, the stress falls on the last syllable unless the last syllable contains the definite article, or, an, and the possessive articles and, in which case it falls on the penultimate one. For instance, chi k, and D and S, a N, but, V H N, and, D T. Exceptions to this rule are some words with the final letter and sometimes the ordinal numerals. As well as, and a small number of other words. Modern Armenian has six monophthongs. Each vowel phoneme in the table is represented by three symbols. The first is the sounds transcription in the International Phonetic Alphabet. After that appears the corresponding letter of the Armenian alphabet. The last symbol is its Latin transliteration. The following table lists the Eastern Armenian consonantal system. The occlusives and affricates have an aspirated series, commonly transcribed with a reversed apostrophe after the letter. Each phoneme in the table is represented by APA, Armenian script and romanization. Sources differ on the place of articulation of these consonants. The major phonetic difference between dialects is in the reflexes of classical Armenian voice onset time. The seven dialect types have the following correspondences, illustrated with the TD series, Armenian corresponds with other Indo-European languages in its structure. But it shares distinctive sounds and features of its grammar with neighboring languages of the Caucasus region. The Armenian orthography is rich in combinations of consonants, but in pronunciation, this is broken up with schwas. Both classical Armenian and the modern spoken and literary dialects have a complicated system of noun declension, with six or seven noun cases but no gender. 
In modern Armenian, the use of auxiliary verbs to show tense has generally supplemented the inflected verbs of classical Armenian. Negative verbs are conjugated differently from positive ones in many tenses, otherwise adding only the negative to the positive conjugation. Grammatically, early forms of Armenian had much in common with classical Greek and Latin, but the modern language, like modern Greek, has undergone many transformations, adding some analytic features. Classical Armenian has no grammatical gender, not even in the pronoun, but there is a feminine suffix. For example, becomes. This suffix, however, does not have a grammatical effect on the sentence. The nominal inflection, however, preserves several types of inherited stem classes. Traditionally, nouns are declined for one of seven cases, nominative, accusative, locative, genitive, dative, ablative, or instrumental, but in the modern language, the distinctions between nominative and accusative, and dative and genitive, are gone. Which case the direct object takes is split based on animacy. Inanimate nouns take the nominative, while animate nouns take the dative. Additionally, animate nouns can never take the locative case. Verbs in Armenian have an expansive system of conjugation with two main verb types in Eastern Armenian and three in Western Armenian changing form based on tense, mood and aspect. Map of the Armenian dialects in early 20th century, own dialects, nearly corresponding to Eastern Armenian L dialects dialects, nearly corresponding to Western Armenian Armenian is a pluricentric language. Having two modern standardized forms, Eastern Armenian and Western Armenian. The most distinctive feature of Western Armenian is that it has undergone several phonetic mergers, these may be due to proximity to Arabic and Turkish-speaking communities. Classical Armenian, which remained the standard until the 18th century, was quite homogenous across the different regions that works in it were written, it may have been a cross-regional standard. The Middle Armenian variety used in the court of Cilician Armenia provides a window into the development of Western Armenian, which came to be based on what became the dialect of Istanbul. While the standard for Eastern Armenian was based on the dialect around Mount Ararat and Yerevan. Although the Armenian language is often divided into East and West, the two standards are actually relatively close to each other in light of wealth of the diversity present among regional non-standard Armenian dialects. The different dialects have experienced different degrees of language contact effects, often with Turkic and Caucasian languages. For some, the result has been significant phonological and syntactic changes. Fortson notes that the modern standard as well has now attained a subordinate clausal structure that greatly resembles a Turkic language. Eastern Armenian speakers pronounce as, th, as, d, and as a tenuous occlusive, t. Western Armenian has simplified the occlusive system into a simple division between voiced occlusives and aspirated ones, the first series corresponds to the tenuous series of Eastern Armenian. And the second corresponds to the Eastern voiced and aspirated series. Thus, the Western dialect pronounces both an as, th, and the letter as, d. There is no precise linguistic border between one dialect and another because there is nearly always a dialect transition zone of some size between pairs of geographically identified dialects. Armenian can be divided into two major dialectal blocks and those blocks into individual dialects, though many of the Western Armenian dialects have become extinct due to the effects of the Armenian genocide. In addition, neither dialect is completely homogeneous, any dialect can be subdivided into several subdialects. Although Western and Eastern Armenian are often described as different dialects of the same language, many subdialects are not readily mutually intelligible. Nevertheless, a fluent speaker of one of two greatly varying dialects who is also literate in one of the standards, when exposed to the other dialect for a period of time will be able to understand the other with relative ease. Distinct Western Armenian varieties currently in use include Hamshetsi, spoken by the Hemshin peoples, the dialects of Armenians of Kesib. Latakia and Gisir al Sugar, Anjar, Lebanon, and Vekfil, Samandag, part of the Suwaitia dialect. Forms of the Karen dialect of Western Armenian are spoken by several hundred thousand people in northern Armenia, mostly in Gumri, Arctic, Akurian, and around 130 villages in Shirak province and by Armenians in Samske Javahedi province of Georgia. Nikachevan on Don Armenians speak another Western Armenian variety based on the dialect of Armenians in Crimea, where they came from in order to establish the town and surrounding villages in 1779. Western Armenian dialects are currently spoken also in Gavar, Aparan, and Talan in Armenia, and by the large Armenian population residing in Abkhazia. Where they are considered to be the first or second ethnic minority, or even equal in number to the local Abkhaz population Armenian keyboard layout using the Armenian alphabet. 
The Armenian alphabet is a graphically unique alphabetical writing system that is used to write the Armenian language. It was introduced around AD 405 by Mezrop Mashtits, an Armenian linguist and ecclesiastical leader, and originally contained 36 letters. Two more letters, and, were added in the Middle Ages. During the 1920s orthography reform in Soviet Armenia, a new letter was added, which was a ligature before plus, whereas the letter was discarded and reintroduced as part of a new letter. This alphabet and associated orthography is used by most Armenian speakers of the Republic of Armenia and the countries of the former Soviet Union. Neither the alphabet nor the orthography has been adopted by diaspora Armenians, including Eastern Armenian speakers of Iran and all Western Armenian speakers, who keep using the traditional alphabet and spelling. Armenian is an Indo-European language, so many of its Proto-Indo-European descended words are cognates of words in other Indo-European languages such as English, Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit. However, due to extensive loaning, only around 1,500 words are known to have been inherited from Indo-European by the classical Armenian stage. The rest were lost, a fact that presents a major challenge to endeavors to better understand Proto-Armenian and its place within the family. Especially as many of the sound changes along the way from Indo-European to Armenian remain quite difficult to analyze. This table lists only some of the more recognizable cognates that Armenian shares with English. Armenian language at Wikipedia's sister projects. Thanks for watching.